good morning Suzuki community. It's Meyer and it's a little overcast today here in Arizona. I'm a little tired from snowboarding yesterday. I'm kind of getting the hang of it. I'm kind of proud of myself that uh, almost 70 I'm out there uh, shredding the bunny hills. So anyways, today we're going to be talking about engine swaps. What can you do with the Suzuki Samurai? So let's start with Suzuki Samurais came with two different engines in their lifespan. You either have an 8 Point nine to one, which is a G13A, or if you had fuel injection from the factory, you had a G13B. The B had seven more horsepower because it had flat top pistons. So you can always get a little bit more horsepower by putting in flat top pistons. The problem with the um, the engines right now is Zooks Off-Road is out of engines. We are not working on Suzuki engines anymore. So this is for the future for you guys that are looking for well, how can I get more horsepower. Not so much for us. So don't call me about this stuff. Uh, sure, I'll answer your tech calls. I'll do harnesses for you. I'm just trying to give you basic information because I've been asked please talk about engine swaps so we know what to do. So the most popular engine swap is going to be the 16 valve 1.6. This engine started in 1992, it ended in 1999. My advice is don't do the 1999. You've got two different versions here. You've got the OBD1, you've got the OBD2. This is the number one engine conversion done in Samurai's known as the 16 valve. I've got other videos explaining how fragile this motor is. I personally cooked three of them, ruined them completely. I'm not a big fan of that engine. I am uh, going in a different direction. Now what has happened because the engines are getting harder and harder to get, uh, another good engine is from 1991 to 1995. That's the 8 valve 1.6. I like that engine. I'm building one more for myself for possibly a buggy. It's going to be propane turbo. So getting back to what came in these cars was 1986 to 1991 was G13A, the 8.9 piston, and then in your fuel injected models, 91 to 95, which was very small amount of the Samurais. Maybe 10% of the Samurais had fuel injected motors. Again, the flat top piston, 77 horsepower. So to put a 1.6 engine in, and again, there's many versions of it. They started in 1989, 90, that's one version. Then you had 91 to 95, 8 valve. Then you had the 92 to 99, 16 valve. A lot of those cars are out there. They're in Geo Trackers. They're in Suzuki Sidekicks. That's where the motors come from. By buying an adapter plate from a company out of Southern California, you find it on my website, that is the best engine adapter you can have. You need that to put it to the 1.3 Samurai transmission. Now there are many different ways of mounting the, the engines in there. Me personally, I like the mount, mounting kit from, again, the company in Southern California. You can see it on my website. I like that one for a lot of reasons. It does lift the motor up enough that you can still close the hood. It gives you the room to put in power steering and AC if you want to go that route. And that's a whole nother video someday, but right now we're going to stick with engines. And of course, what's really happening, I would say, in the engine business right now is the 2.0s and 2.3s. This is really making a lot of people really satisfied. And what you see behind me is a 2.0 in the Orozu car. So these are running about 127 plus horsepower. And again, you can still use the same adapter from the company in California, but one thing you need to know is that the flywheel bolt pattern changes. This is the coolest thing about engine conversions with the Suzuki. If you have the room to put in the taller motor, and you usually do that with suspension because you want to run bigger tires, yeah, you can do as low car to the ground you know, and have a bigger motor, but you have to do more things like an oil pan conversion. And so what I'm trying to explain to you is that most of us that have Suzuki's are going to do a suspension system. We're going to either do spring over or arch springs down below to you know raise up the car so we can put in these taller motors. And so the thing that I'm kind of not happy about is the engine mounts. There's a lot of engine mounts out there that I don't like. Um, yes, you can use Dodge 218. I know thousands of you do that because you can save money. I don't like them because they're kind of hard, they're, you know, they're made for a much heavier motor. I like not to have vibrations in my car. I like, I don't like my spare chains rattling around or screws rattling and buzzing. I don't like that. And so I do like rubber mounted. 
Uh, I do like this uh, one particular engine adapter. So let's let's just talk about cranks because this is kind of cool. The 1.3, the different versions. The 1.6 is different versions. They all have a six bolt pattern so that you can simply bolt on a 1.3 flywheel if you have a manual transmission. All the Samurais came with manual transmissions. But once you get to the 2.0s, you're going to have to deal with a, a friend of mine up in a company in Oregon called Trail Top. They really own this business for 2.0, so I've just been referring people to them for a long time on this. So that's an eight-hole flywheel, which means that you're going to have to have your flywheel precision machine. You do not want that running like an egg. If you're going to try to drill that with a, you know, <laughs> drill that by hand, you better be pretty good, better than me. And I think uh, I'm a decent machinist. So you're going to get that special flywheel in a kit. Now when you do the 2.0s, let me go backwards now, when you do the 2.0s, that's a special radiator. This engine's hard to keep cool. That's one of the biggest complaints about the 2.0. So you want to get that radiator from Trail Tough on their kit because their kit includes a lot. For the money, it's a good deal. Now, but when you do the 1.6s, I always say do an aluminum radiator. I don't like the radiator that Suzuki put in originally. I'm even saying for you 1.3 guys to go ahead and do, you know, the aluminum radiator. There's lots of companies that sell them. Um, the company in Southern California, they have a good one. Trail Tough has a good one. Um, you know, if you're a little tight on money, you got your Chinese stuff from Amazon. But just to get a better radiator, the copper radiators, they get all filled up with something called electroly electrolysis powder. Sorry, I had to spit that out. I have taken out uh, radiators that weigh 15 pounds more than they did when they got put in, and all the cores are clogged. And so uh, I think I've showed you before in another video, you can take your dipstick and you can shove it down the radiator. And if it doesn't go in, your radiator's clogged. So if you want to, you know, keep your Samurai running nice, get an aluminum radiator. Obviously, if you're going to run fuel injection, you have to keep in mind that this stuff is old. The, all the Suzuki stuff was built a long time ago, probably uh, before you were even born, most of you that watch this video. And so these components now, they're not readily available. I've got some bad news for you. One of the companies that I do business with, just let me know, big company, no more stuff out of Japan for the engines. That's why I'm leaving the Suzuki engine business. A lot of you have heard that I'm selling Zooks Off-Road. If I don't go with it as the face of Zooks Off-Road, then I'm not selling it. I'd rather close it if it isn't going to get handled the way I want it to be. So a lot of the potential buyers are a little discouraged when they find out I want to do the YouTube videos. I want to invent new product for them. I want them to benefit and get all the money. I just want to hang around in the Suzuki community and uh, continue the legend of Zooks Off-Road. And so I want to talk a little bit about diesels now. I'm not a big fan of diesels. I've uh, tried to explain it to you like this. It's a wonderful conversion if it's a trailer queen or if you don't drive it on the highway. Once you take a diesel motor and you have the Suzuki Samurai, you're going to have too high of an RPM. So the big complaint after the diesel conversions is that the engine has to run too fast, overheats, gets bad mileage. You don't do that when you're off-road. You do that on the highway. If you do a lot of highway driving with the diesel motor, the answer is to buy really, really tall gears, like Ford 9-inch. They can get you down below 3, and now you're going to get 2,200 RPM on that diesel motor going down the highway. You're going to keep it happy. So that's just a little short video. I just you know, kind of let you know about the engines. If you have any more uh, technical questions, my cell phone is out there in the whole world. So that's the close of this video. I just wanted to talk a little bit about Suzuki engine swaps. I have a, a plan to do something really special in the future, but again, I always ask this in the videos to subscribe. And the reason why I want you to hit the notification button is so that you get advised, you know, you get that alert that we have a new video out. And uh, I'm going to continue to keep making videos. You keep commenting on what you'd like me to see. You asked for Suzuki Sidekick. You asked for some tracker stuff. I did it. And you're not watching it. So come on. Let's uh, communicate here. What do you want? I'll be happy to do it. Uh, someone asked me to do engine conversion information. I just did it for you. Why? Because we have so many new people coming into the industry here, the Suzuki community. 
they don't know. And then they ask questions, and then they get uh, treated bad on Facebook. You know, people say, you know, look it up in the factory service manual. Don't be an ass. If you want tech support, call me. There's no one better in America. Come on. I'm the last old guy left. You want to talk to somebody, get the information, call me. Happy to talk to you. Anyways, want to say goodbye. Be safe. Have fun. Go wheeling. And thank you for watching the videos from Souks Off-Road. Bye-bye.